Cool. So today we're going to look at how you can save the player position and then set it to that saved player position. Um, so quick illustration over here, uh, we've built this Automator Plus extension that you can install within Premiere Pro. And the idea here is to go and paste in some extend script that we'll be writing today. And you can save the position of the player and then you can actually be in a different place within the timeline. Hit your move player set position um, and it'll actually go back to that save position. So how did we do this? Right, so we've got a little code here. Uh, be sure to check out our GitHub page uh, where you can submit issues, uh, submit requests. Uh, we feel free to uh, drop anything in the comments below on videos or problems that you might be having with ExtendScript. Um, the link for this code that I'm busy with will be linked as well in the description. Cool. So setting and saving the player position, quite a simple task. Uh, basically what we want to do is we want to create a variable that stores the player position and then we want to recall that variable and basically set the player to that position, right? Um, so as always, we're going to get to, we're going to use our sequence variable over here. Uh, so a little shorthand sequence, getting the active sequence. So that's most of the time our getting going part with an extend script. So we get a grip on that active sequence. And then we're going to call this get player position um, method that exists on the sequence object. Um, that'll actually return us the player position. So I'm gonna put a little uh, breakpoint over here and execute this code just to give you a feel for what's happening there. Cool, so we are in here, we've got our saved player position, boom. Um, and you'll see actually this is of type time. Um, so Premiere Pro have updated the API to create this time object, really cool. Um, and basically you can use it to swap between seconds and ticks. Um, so if you've worked with extend script, you know, switching between the two is a bit of a, a nuisance. Uh, but Premiere Pro now supports this default time object. Um, for setting and getting the player position, we're just going to use ticks. Um, but in the following video, we're going to look at how to use seconds and then actually how to transform your seconds into ticks via this time object. Okay, so the save player position is basically giving us the seconds and the ticks of where our position is. Um, and what we want to do is save that, right? Cool, so I'm just gonna comment out this line eight, which is basically setting the player position, right? Because we first just wanna save it, otherwise we're gonna get the saved position and then set it again. Um, so let's head over here to one minute and two seconds, head into our VS code, run this guy, which is not working. Okay, closing VS code. Da, 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 da. La, 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 la. Cool, we're back. Um, cool. So what we're doing here is just saving this position in this variable. And I've set my player to one minute and two seconds over here. So if I were to move to 28 seconds over here, um, and now I'm gonna uncomment the saved position line, and I'm gonna comment the saved position line and uncomment the set player position. Keeping in mind that in memory, we've now stored that player position at one minute. Um, so if we go ahead and execute this guy, we'll see that, hey, our player does indeed move forward to that position. Um, so if you want to assign some shortcuts for these automations within our plugin, um, then it's advised that you create some functions. Uh, so the nice thing about functions is it modularizes your code. Um, so it makes it nice and easy to use little Lego blocks. Um, so over here, I've created the save position and set pos uh, functions. And we can go ahead and use these guys within our extend script plugin, right? Uh, but just something to take note of. Um, within programming, there's this idea of variable scope. Um, and the idea there is that if you create the saved position variable, as we've done here on line seven, then that variable is only available to the main script. Uh, so if you create a little function, and usually scope within programming load, um, languages are denoted by these curly braces. So within another set of curly braces, if you use saved position again, it won't reference the global saved position, right? It's a little finicky thing. Um, so we somehow need to create a place where we can store our saved position without 
using just a variable. So we need to attach it to some type of global variable or global object. Um, and in this case, we're actually gonna attach it to this dollar sign dot. Um, so this dollar sign is something that is available to you in Extend Script. Right, so this dollar object is not just a place for us to dump or to use as a global storing place uh, within our functions. Uh, the dollar object is actually a very, uh, it's got a lot of methods within it. Um, so if you head over to chapter eight uh, in the PDF that we've dropped in the, the comments, then you see that the dollar object has got a few uh, methods that you can start looking at. Uh, by the way, this PDF that I'm looking at, very useful to see all the little nuanced things that you can do with Extend Script. But for us, uh, we just need a place to store our global variable and this dollar sign um, I know is gonna be accessible anywhere within Extend Script, so I'm just attaching our saved position to that. Okay, so this method, uh, save position, uh, is basically saying, okay, cool, let's do what exactly what we did at the top there um, and save our player position, but this time attach it to this global object. And then if we set our position, then we're gonna be using that global saved position um, as well. Cool. When you're working with a set player position, just know that it always wants ticks. Um, so hence, I'm just converting that time object that I've stored into, I'm just saying dot ticks to actually access that ticks attribute of the time object. So now that I've defined these two methods, um, I can actually go into the automated plus extension and use the custom extend script uh, automation and then just basically execute this save position. Um, so that's my method that I can execute there as well as saving the position and setting the position. Great stuff. Um, so I've assigned the S and the Shift S shortcut keys for that. Um, so if I'm in here and I'm saving that position, um, then I can actually go back to that using Shift S as well. 